Hi, guys. So we're gonna do a little test play on this real quick. This is the Sea of Thieves RPG. Here with your boy, Freddy Prince Jr. Welcome to Geghead. Hope you guys are having a good day. These are the basic instructions and it also gives you like a starter mission. And then there's like uh, two other books that they give you voyages. So if you're like, well, Freddy, I'm not good at coming up with stories. They have like 12 in there for you. So uh, lots of good stuff, stories that can help you come up with better ideas. Little preparation, not preparation H, mind you. Although I'm sure that's helpful for some people too. This is their first story, Into the Shroud. Sorry, guys, I'm doing this on my phone, so. So this is like the little story they'd give you. I'll give you a pirate voice, okay? Here we go. Your crew members aboard the Maiden's Rest, a galleon run by Captain Silas Norwich. He's tall with dark bags under his eyes and a gray grizzled beard cut shorter than his long dark hair. You are somewhere in the Caribbean and ahead of you the storm clouds look dark red as if they're angry at you. Rain pours down and waves pound against your ship. Behind you, a galleon, a brigantine, and a sloop are just out of range, but obviously trying to catch you. That is because Captain Silas betrayed them all and stole the loot from your last voyage. To Captain Silas... Close that. To Captain Silas. This shows he's a better pirate than any of them. The enemy ships are probably why Silas has steered the ship right into this horrible storm. And then here it says, some players might want to know what those ships are like. Tell them that a galleon is a classic pirate ship that is powerful but harder to maneuver than other ships. Sloops are the smallest ships, not very dangerous, but nimble and quick. Brigantines are in between galleons and sloops. And if you look here, you guys, uh, the mini that I had built, and if you think that ship looks cool, um, it is cool. It does not come with the game. I had it custom made uh, from Nerd Propellant. Uh, he's on Etsy, he's on Twitter, he's on, on Instagram, he's wherever you need to find him, and his prices are super duper fair. He's 3D making ventilator masks right now, um, so he's a little busy, but check his stuff out for sure. Um, so we're on a brigantine, and basically, what this story does, hi by the way, what up, um, is your captain breaks you through this thing called the shroud, which is this sort of like electromagnetic storm cloud that no pirate ship is brave enough to go through. But the rumor is, if you are, and you're good enough, and maybe just a little bit lucky, then you could break through the shroud and enter this world known as the Sea of Thieves, where it's a pirate's dream, there's no law, it's, it's the pirate rules, and that's what they're, that's what this sort of mythos behind the video game is. So this is the role-playing game version of that. I'm going to show you guys like a little test scenario that I'll just throw together real quick and we'll see what happens. And, uh, and then that'll be the end of it. But this is based off the video game, which I play every day. And if you guys ever want to play with me or you want to see me out on the sea sometimes, you see a captain, you go, hey, is that fat red-headed pirate with the sweet hat and the macaw on his shoulder. Is that Freddie Prinze Jr.? Well, if you want to know if that's me, just look for the name Cheeks, C-H-E-E-K-S, like butt cheeks, Jr., J-R. And that's me. So if you see me out there, give me an ahoy, shoot your cannons at me, try to kill me with your saber, however you like to pirate, I do not judge. Um, so we're going to get into this and uh, I'll tell you a little story and we'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. Again, sorry it's on my phone. It's kind of janky, but you got to just deal with that. All righty. 
So I got my cool little uh, Dungeons and Dragons pad here. This doesn't come uh, with the game. I just have a bunch of these different sceneries. Some of them are beach, some are ocean, some are wood, like on the back side of this. And they're all double-sided. Um, I have a castle floor, cobblestone street, Arctic landscape. I, I got all kinds of stuff. So I have tons of adventures planned for my pirates that are going to be joining us um, when this coronavirus is gone and we can uh, no longer social distance. You know it's bad when you're RPGing by yourself. I'm basically playing with myself. Let's sing that together. I'm playing with myself. Oh, oh. I'm playing with myself. Oh, 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 oh. All right, you guys. These are known as the legendary dice. I'll show them to you in this beautiful dice tray that I have. Um, they all have different results. The victory chest, that's the one you want the most. That's going to give you two victories or you can belay, meaning cancel out, this, which is what you don't want. The dreaded skull and anchor. This is like a critical failure if you're familiar with the fantasy flight system or seriously failing your role in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, you do have options, however. You can take an injury, which can usually be solved just with food that your character carries on you. Um, the GM can decide. And if it's my choice, you're usually going to drop your sword or your gun will malfunction, things of that nature. Um, and it's and it's a failure. But the chest can get rid of that. If you get the bone nails, these things, they're just nails, but they look like bone nails to me. Um, oh, it's because there's a bone in the middle. That's why. But uh, if you get those guys, and there's more of these than anything else on here, I think. Yeah, there's four of these. Uh, two of these. Two? Yeah, two. Um, these mean nothing. It's just a neutral roll. And then this is the one that's just simple victory. You get one victory. And the way they run this is real, real simple. It's basically difficulty timer. Difficulty is the first number. And I'd say like, you've just run into a skeleton and his difficulty is two and the timer is four, which means you have four turns to get two victories. If you do, he's dead. If you fail, you're injured or you're dead or whatever the consequence that the game master tells you. Uh, they call this system the Avast system. And uh, I've done a little bit of practice rounds before my minis and stuff were made just with friends and the basics of the game. And we had a blast doing this. So I want to start implementing, since we can't play the game right now, some of the, the elements that, uh, that we're going to get to use. I can't even show you guys my special table because it's a Geghead Studios and I can't get there. Um, so you're stuck with my table. If you're familiar with this channel, you'll recognize it as the original Geg War Season 1 table. Uh, it's up in my attic now. It's where I play all my home games on, and we're using it for this. This fine brigantine, just kidding, brigantine, um, is known as the Dead Sexy. Uh, if you play the Sea of Thieves video game, you'll recognize the, the design, the sail set, and the hull, but I don't want to spoil that for people, so I won't say anything. Um, but we call her the Dead Sexy, and these are our four players, or four pirates in this case. And they've just washed up on shore. They've broken through the shroud, but everything went black, and they were certain they were dead. And as they slowly start to get to their feet, we'll call this guy Captain Freddy. Captain Freddy looks around. He's got a sweet gun. Look at these hand-painted minis. What? I didn't do them. I just think they're great. <laughs> He starts to pull himself up from the sand. He looks around and he sees his fine vessel, the fine brigantine known as the Dead Sexy. He tries to startle or tries to wake up his other pirate friends, but to no avail. So he fires his pistol once in the air. What? What? What happened? What happened? This is his other captain on the ship. You guys can all be captains. We're going to call this one Captain John with the fantastic blue cape and slightly Asian. Slightly Asian Captain John, that's what we'll call him. He says, oh, what happened, what happened? And the other pirates, this is Captain Claire, she gets up, she goes, why'd you wake me up, you jerk? I'll cut you with my swords. And then finally here we got Captain, who should this captain be? Is this a guy or a girl? Oh, this is a girl for sure. This is gonna be Captain Pemberton. <laughs> Amy Louise, that is. Captain Pemberton has awoken, what on earth? What on earth, captains? What's going on? And as she looks around, she goes, Dear God, I thought the, dear, the dead sexy had sunk for sure. Where are we? And Captain Freddy looks at the rest of them. And he's for sure the most handsome of this, this lot. And the most humble. 
but certainly the most handsome. He looks at his fellow captains, not pointing his gun at them, and he says, We must have made it to the Sea of Thieves. Dun, 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 dun. That's the music. And they start walking down the beach. Dun, 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 dun. These D&D boards are great, by the way. They're also dry erase. So during our games, what I do is uh, I mark their successes and failures for them so everyone can keep track of it. They each get their own color. And I just do a little marking right here when they fail, when they take an injury, when they've used their ammo, when uh, they've used their food, when they have a treasure on them, all those types of things. I track it for them because I'm a nice GM, not a jerk GM. All right, so they're traveling down the beach, la da 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 da, and all of a sudden this old drunk, this old drunk pirate comes. He hobbles up. Look, this dude's got no leg. Forget a peg leg. He's got a full on crutch. And this bird right here, his name is Macaulay Culkin, and he hobbles down the beach. Oh, he's clearly drunk. Ahoy there, captains. It looks as if you have just made it to the Sea of Thieves for the first time. Yeah, rookies. <laughs> and he barfs and he passes out. We're just going to say he barfed and passed out. And as he starts to come back to, oh, oh excuse me. You might want to find the local tavern, grab yourself a grog, and find out the fun things to do here on the sea. And he barfs on my dice tray too. And he rolls over here. And all our captains look at him like he's rather an odd chap. And they continue down the beach. And then all of a sudden, these two jerks start coming up. Halt, I say! And all our captains halt. They're more, they're not scared. They're just caught off guard. They're like, what the heck going on? Who are these guys? They said, we got no more room for pirates. The Sea of Thieves is all full. And our pirates are like, uh, there's six of us here, bro. Or seven. There's, there's seven. And he throws up again. But there's certainly seven of them. I think there's room for all of us. Well, you thought wrong. And if you want to get to the, where do we say the tavern? If you want to get to the tavern, it won't be on this island. Because my friend here will fight you. Well, you don't seem very brave. I'm plenty brave. You're just not worth my time. And here comes our first fight, people. This is an average pirate with a difficulty of two. And we're going to give our pirate a timer of four, which is the average amount. But this pirate says, hey, man, I want to assist. I'm going to jump in. Now, normally the GM would be like, eh, I'm trying to keep this guy out of the fight for now, but we're just going to play this loose. So he's going to say, but I only want to like sneak it in. Like maybe if he gets bumped into me, then I hit him. So I'm going to give this guy an extra dice for this roll. We're all going to say these are level three pirates, which means each pirate gets three dice. If you do a campaign mode with this, every time your pirates finish a story, the smart move as you, a GM, would do would be to give them an extra dice. So in your next story, they're a level four pirate and so on and so forth. I think level seven, maybe even level 12 is the highest, something like that. But these are all gonna be level three pirates, which means they're gonna roll three, di three dice and they're gonna have four rounds to get two victories, okay? So not a very hard fight. And these two are watching. Claire's like, oh, this dude's about to get jacked up. Ben Burton's like, oh dear God, he doesn't know what he's doing. And then uh, Captain John's like, yo, lead him over towards me and I'm going to bonk him on the head with the butt of my sword right here. And then my pirate's like, yo, you said that crazy loud, John. And then this pirate goes, yes, yes, we heard you now. Duel. Now, normally this would be very Harrison Ford and I would just shoot him. <laughs> but we're going to say I'm using my cutlass. And in the game, you're allowed to carry two weapons with you. And the weapons are your cutlass, your sword. Uh, there's only one sword. This isn't the game Sid Meier's Pirates where you get three. This is Sea of Thieves. A cutlass, and then you have a pistol, which is good for uh, medium range. You have a blunderbuss, which is like a shotgun. That's good for uh, short range. You have the Eye of Reach, which is a sniper rifle, and that's long range. And then the cutlass is melee range. So those are the four weapons. And Captain Freddy, he prefers clearly the flintlock pistol and the cutlass, since that's what he's going to use. And he's going to make his first roll, right? Now, normally, I'd roll in the, in the tray, but I want you guys to be able to see everything well. All right, so we have one victory and two neutrals. Again, the bones with nails are neutrals, and we got a little island with two other little islands on it. 
And so that's one victory. So I'm going to put this victory aside, okay? I'm going to put it right here so that we can keep track. Our second roll. Oh, and since John's giving me help, I was going to put an extra one in there, but I don't think we'll need it. Let's get an anchor so I can show you guys some bad stuff. Okay, so that was super easy. Those are all successes. That's two more that we didn't need. We only needed one more. And then we got this awesome uh, chest. So with that, I'll use it as a narrative dice. And I'll say, since you got so many victories within that, you can either put two victories in the hold, meaning you can save them for your fight against this guy, or I can give you an advantage against this guy. Meanwhile, this dude tried to make a move on Captain Freddy, right? And he went this way, and Captain Freddy did like this, the pirate spinning back fist and spun this way, flip, 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 boom, off with your head, that pirate's down. And then he turns with delight at the last pirate. And John's like, dang, bro, I didn't even need to bonk him on my head. Let me get this fool. And Captain Freddy says, but of course. So they kick this body out of the way. Get out of the way. Captain John's right here. And then this pirate's here, and this pirate says, I'm not going to fight you. I, or wait, this is a girl pirate. Oh, this is a girl pirate. Because I'm not going to fight you. I'm going to fight your best woman. Dun, dun, dun. And Captain Freddy goes, oh, snap. And Captain John goes, dang. And now these two, they're like, yo, which one of us is the best? All right, we're going to fight each other to find out. <laughs> no, they're not. So they come up here. And Lady Pemberton says, because she's British, She's like, the honor is yours. And Claire's American. She's like, yeah, that's right. It's mine. <laughs> so she's going to come fight. They're one space apart. And I use this board because it's an easy way to determine the distance. So like that would be uh, melee. That would be blunderbuss, pistol, and anything further out would be eye of reach. You can't have infinite range with the sniper rifle, but I'll give you some range because I'm a nice gym. So here's the fight. Uh, this one we're going to say is uh, also an average pirate two, and the timer will be four. There's a move called an interrupt that NPCs can use where they're basically removing one of your victories. Um, but they can only use that once per fight and we're gonna say that she has it. So even if uh, Claire gets a victory here, she can take it away. So here's our first roll. Let me move these corpses out of the way. But I'm not a corpse, I'm just drunk and I'm back now. I'm gonna watch this fight. All right, bro, sir. All right, we got two victories already. <laughs> All right, so I would make these fights a little tougher, but just so you see, and two neutrals. She's going to take one victory away, so that would turn it to just, yes, good guess, just to that. So we'll say Claire has one victory so far, and she needs one more. Now, that NPC will not be able to use the interrupt a second time this fight. They'll also have dangers, some of the higher level ones, and those I think they can use every single round, which is pretty sick. Dangers are like if you roll an anchor, you take two uh, failure options instead of one. All right, we finally rolled an anchor. Okay, so we got our victories, but we also got the anchor. Um, so here's what happened. So Lady Claire was like, yo, you don't want to mess with me. And then this drunken captain who I gave a masculine accent to now is like, Oh, do I know? And Claire just, boom, drop kicks her. Bang! Didn't even kill her, drop kicked her. Stood above her and looked. And uh, the reason she drop kicked her was because the failure broke one of her swords. She couldn't use it. Um, but she still wins. Or she could have, uh, well, she could have taken an injury as well during the fight and still won, which would leave her with just two dice to roll for her next move unless she took food which would then heal her and bring her back up to three. But just an easy fight. Those are just average characters. Um, that would be like if you guys fought a skeleton, who I have somewhere. Where are my skellies? Well, let me show you my skeleton captain. I just got this guy. Show you this guy. So this would be an example, and he's actually made out of metal. I don't know if you can see him very well. My phone's kind of janky. Dun, 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 dun. I'll show you who he would represent. And my story is going to be Captain Macaulay Culkin. But in this, no, that's not it. Did I grab the wrong book? No, we're getting close. I know we are. So here, you can get at least get an example of it. So average four so that's not bad right then we'd have to have four victories and then 
Okay, so let's do a four and four. So just so you can get a better idea of it. So let's say this pirate, these two pirates are fighting again. We need four victories in four turns. This will be harder because more injuries are going to happen, I bet. Well, we're not. <laughs> okay, so we got it right away. Um, so there's an example of an easy fight. I'm trying to roll bad, you guys. I just happen to be a dice god, and I never roll bad. I'm not joking. When I play D&D, &D, I roll a natural 20 at least one every three turns. It's not a joke. It's really weird, <laughs> but I roll nice. If you guys are watching, if you have the DC Universe app, uh, if you don't, you should get it. You can get it for 30 days for free. If you don't like it, just get rid of it. But uh, I have an RPG show on there called DC All-Stars, and we play the old school 1985 DC uh, RPG game. And uh, Sam Whitworth's the game master, and you'll see the roles that I pull off in that. Every episode, there's six episodes, are insane, and it drives GMs crazy, or DMs in this case. But uh, yeah, so I roll nice. So once again, hi -ya! she's been defeated. So our pirates are victorious, and they make it to the inn where Duke is uh, the, the, the head of the Sea Dogs clan, and he sends them off on this awesome sort of journey, and that would begin their first story. But uh, super fun game, it's super duper easy. I promise when other people are rolling, they hit failures. <laughs> I just rarely do. I could seriously roll them for you for the 24 minutes and 12 seconds this video has been playing, and I probably hit three anchors, and everything else would be victories. But um, while we're here, and before we end it, I'll show you guys some of the other minis that I had built. Um, again, I didn't make any of these. I have zero creative talent with that kind of stuff, but uh, I'm happy to show you what we got. So hang on for one second. Let me clear these out of the way. But I love my pirate minis. They're awesome. And I love dice. So here's the dead sexy. And I just finished gluing the ladders so that they don't like flop everywhere. But there she is, a beautiful ship, isn't she? And it's pretty much exactly the way, pretty much, not 100%, but pretty much exactly the way it looks in the video game, which I love. And when your players get to the higher levels, there's a Kraken instance. And the Kraken, you need like 20 victories in, I don't remember how many turns, um, but it's it's hard to do. So you need to be like a level 10 or higher pirate. But check out these Kraken tentacles that we're going to surround the ship with right now. So when this happens, I'll have my full ocean map up. Um, underneath this one is, oh, that's my full ocean right there. I can do it right now. Watch this. And then I gotta go. Or mama's gonna kill these kids. So this is my ocean instance. And this poor ship would be out at sea. And then all of a sudden. Eight of them, guys. Eight of them. Kraken instance. Hope you can see that. Okay, cool. You can see it. All right, groovy, groovy, groovy. So yeah, man. And that you have to hit a lot of victories. And then as they get X amount of victories, after they get you know three, four victories, then you can pull a tentacle away representing that they're making progress on it, things like that. Anyway, um, I'm really looking forward to playing this, and this will be the first one I run on our channel, and uh, I'm looking forward to bringing in different pirates. Sometimes I'll make them high level so they can do stuff like this. Sometimes I'll make them low level, and then I've also found a way with their a vast system to do verses, where we can have four-on-four -four battles, Pirates on pirates, all friends talking trash, insulting each other, and shooting each other with cannonballs. And those will be all at sea battles. That's not to say you can't board the ship and swashbuckle, but um, it'll be much more like nautical battles on this huge table that's in the shape of the captain's map from the actual game um, and as a representation of it too. So I hope you guys like the stream. Um, 
Again, it's just from my phone, so sorry for the one angle. Super exciting, I know. And uh, appreciate y'all. Take it easy, and good evening, and good game. Peace.